the Tuesday Daylighters. I'm so thrilled and, and grateful to be a part of this abiding time together as we read the Word of God, we hear the Word of God, and then of course we look at the uh, insights that Dick Brogdon brings in his devotion, Live Dead Joy. And then most of all, we look at how we're going to apply the Word of God in our lives and um, be able to live our lives in such a way that we can be salt and light, that we can um, bring glory to Jesus in our everyday activities and in all of our conversations and actions that take place. So this morning, we're going to begin from the book of Hebrews. So we're gonna read backwards. And so we're gonna begin there, Hebrews chapter eight. All right, let's go there. The point of what we are saying is this, we do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by man. Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, and so it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest, for there are already men who offer the gifts, pre the, offer the gifts prescribed by the law. They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle, see to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But the ministry Jesus has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is mediator is superior to the old one. And it is founded on better promises. For if there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, no place would have been sought for another. But God found fault with the people and said, The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they did not remain faithful to my covenant and I turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother saying, know the Lord because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. By calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete and what is obsolete and aging will soon disappear. Okay, we're gonna go into Matthew chapter 26. We are within the, the last few chapters in this gospel. And so we are leading up to the cross. In fact, today we are reading of Jesus's betrayal. Uh, we are in the same chapter, though we will not be reading the verses on um, the, the Last Supper and, and Peter's denial. We're, but like I said, we're gonna read some of this today together. And so because I wanna concentrate um, as it ties to our devotion that we're gonna read in just a little bit, I am going to I am going to read a, a pretty decent amount from this gospel. So let's start at um, verse one. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, "As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified." Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they plotted to arrest Jesus in some sly way and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. When Jesus was in Bethany, in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar a very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? 
She has done a beautiful, beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? So they counted out for him 30 silver coins. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. And then now let's skip down to verse 36. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? At that time, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Wow. We are going to um, forego reading in Psalm today, and we're going to go straight into the devotion. As I said, I wanted a pretty um, significant amount of time in Matthew 26 as it relates. And so today's devotion is entitled, To Give or To Give Up. Matthew 26 unveils two different perspectives of giving from two different givers. One giver poured out her life savings of an alabaster flask of costly fragrant oil on Jesus, verse 7. The other gave Jesus up for 30 pieces of silver, verse 15. We face a similar choice daily, to give to Jesus extravagantly or to give him up. 
giving to Jesus extravagantly. To abide in Jesus, we must lavish extravagant time on him daily, both in disciplined blocks of time and in an all-day communion. Extravagant giving is not fulfilled through a one-time sacrifice, but by a daily choice, a daily offering. The alabaster box was the accumulated savings of one woman, and giving it to Jesus would have direct implications on her future. When Jesus is precious to us, we give him our best, we give up other things, we prioritize him in our schedule, and we linger in his presence daily. Other daily choices such as when we go to bed, when we get up, how we spend our time, what we say no to, and what we prioritize undergird our responses to Jesus and now giving Jesus up. We criticize Jesus for giving Jesus up for a sum, but we are not that different from Judas. We continually give Jesus up for truncated and rushed abiding times. We give him up for an extra hour of sleep. We give him up to waste time watching sports or movies that sully our souls. Most often, we betray him with the kiss of false intimacy. We pay lip service to time spent with him, but we do not live it. Mm. Pseudo abiding is a betrayal. When we claim with our mouths that Jesus is supreme, but we do not live that commitment in the moments and hours of our day, we stand with Jesus and kiss the Savior. Whew. We cannot continue to hide behind the cries or worries of legalism. No lover is thought legalistic who is devoted to his bride. Another way we betray Jesus is when we use him as a bartering chip. Jesus sold Sorry, Judas sold Jesus cheaply. Just how much ransom is the king of kings worth? We too tend to approach Jesus with the clenched fist of possession, lingering with him for what he can give us or worse yet, for what we can get for him. Jim Elliot prayed, Lord, release me from the tension of the grasping hand. Abiding is not grasping Jesus to gain for self. Abiding is delighting in Jesus to the extent that we lose all sense of time and all desire for material gain, including healing and blessing. All we want is Jesus himself. All we want to do is give to him. This is our alabaster box to be so delighted in Jesus that we give him all. Lord Jesus, may that be us today, that we give you all, that we do spend those prioritized and, and specific chunks of time with you, but that we abide with you all day long, that we're thinking about you, that we're memorizing scripture so that we are able to speak the word of God and that you are speaking in and through us. Lord, let us be so in love with you and so in awe of you and with such great reverence that we desire and delight to be with you, to give you our all, that we worship you, that we don't give you up, but that we give to you, our very selves and our very lives. Thank you for being with us this morning. I pray that this word really sinks in to our hearts. I believe that there is so much truth in what we heard today. And though challenging and though difficult, because I know that we love our sleep and we love our schedules and we love our children and our time spent in entertainment and things like that, let our priority be Jesus. Let what we say and who we declare that we are to the world genuinely be who we are inside. Because from that, then we will be strengthened and then we will have true joy and peace and strength and hope that we can pour out in our lives to those around us. God bless you. Lord willing, we will see you tomorrow.